beautifuls, this is Rome here, and welcome back to Seduce Me, the Otomi visual novel game. Alright, I am still <laughs> re-recording in chunks. Uh, right now it's like 12.22 in the morning for me, so this is going to be like the last pre-recorded I'm going to do. Since I went out after episode 3, I went out with uh, Tyler's mom. So, yeah, I came back, so let's get right to it. But I was still curious about one thing. Uh, excuse me. All at once they looked at me. I didn't know why, but I have. But having all of them look at me made me feel kind of important. Like a queen or something. Why not a princess? What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand understand. Yeah, like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appeared in your house is perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? Why were you attacked is what I want to understand. Now you're just being rude, Sam. I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? It's difficult to understand. No, I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently, we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of... misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So, you're all better now, Ray? Yup, all thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Hmm. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. Hmm. I didn't know that. I thought they would have to actually do stuff. I didn't know just touching my hand they can obtain energy. I didn't know that. I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power. It was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. Did that mean each of them like touched my forehead or something to gain some sensual? Okay. Weird. These incubi intrigued me, but at the same time I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do y'all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we going to do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take them easily. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there. If they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes, they probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They would- they probably would cause chaos all over town. Or on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded, like lab frogs for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded of me back then. I was standing alone. The entire classroom was filled with laughter and chatter. But I stood in the midst of the word. A quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy all the while she stood there. On the plus side, I wasn't engaged in any of the drama that may have arose. Like scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was kind of nice just standing back and watching things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself that I preferred being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, Yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one that I like better than me, so I ought to spend more time with myself. But there was a certain bitterness that, coupled with being alone, made me feel sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize it at that moment. And even after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. That's when I decided on it right then. 
I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over there and see what he had to say about it. Before that, I had e never seen him before. What better time to see him then? If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might as well have turned to him. So after school, I decided to walk there. I had no idea how to get there, and I was armed with only a scrap of paper with an address scribbled on it. As a seven-year-old, I obviously had great ideas. I soon became lost. And like that, like I always did when I felt lost, I just stood there on the sidewalk, back pressed up, back pressed up against the wall, and eyes looking at the strangers passing by. And like always, people continued to pass by and life continued to go on. I was sadder than ever. I had ended up in the situation I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I thought that I was silly for even thinking that I could change things with my own hands. That was, until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that, is that you? you? I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face, but it was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. And from that moment, things began to change. Life began moving its rusty joints, and I realized that things were moving along. Suddenly, I had become a part of the crowd that moved like a blur past me. I was no longer someone who stood still and watched others hurry past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to help them, though would I? I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if that was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangement that I had imagined when I first moved in. There was a matter of making sure no one found out about their powers. Thinking about them as lab rats made my stomach queasy. And even if they passed for humans, how would I explain how having guys living in my house? Imagine if my friends came over. They would practically think I was a part of a harem or something. Oh god. Imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. Who knows what my dad would do. I think he would have them arrested on spot. <sighs> this was hard. Maybe I should have written out a pros and cons list before I actually having to make the decision. Don't, Don't worry, worry too, too much, much about, about it. it. You, have you have plenty of time to decide. decide. Besides, Besides, you should, you should do, what do what makes, makes you happy, happy as well. well. It was strange that I happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little, but it did kind of make sense. They weren't in the same exact situation that I was in before, but I did want to help them out. I think it would be easy. It, I think it would ease my conscience and make me a bit happy to give them help. As weird as that sounded, clenching my hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, um. You could... What was that, lovely lady? <sighs> Shivers. That is, um... Spit it out already! You could stay here. You could stay with me here, if you like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads for my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all needed a place to stay, and, well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed it like it made sense. It was quiet, it was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm you or any guest that comes over. Well, save for enemies, but... You get the drift? That sounds reasonable. Second, you had to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so, yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's cool, little man roommates. <laughs> it's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. Yeah, Sam's not agreeing to that. What? Are you serious? Shh, be quiet, Sam. 
I haven't slept in the bed for days. <laughs> they all seem to like the idea, except for Sam. And hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It would have be if it would be interesting having five guys help me with taking care of the house. Given they would follow the rules that I had just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. Who are these punks? I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes! This is awesome! Also beautiful. If you need a bedfellow. No, I'm good. I'm good, Eric. Um. Eric, knock it off. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed help, and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally, I'm starving! Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food. On the table, I noticed James' eyes twitch, twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Dude, I'm pretty sure they're really hungry, though, James. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Yeah. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost kind of hold it in. Um, let's live in the mood. I look back at... <laughs> I looked back at Daniel, who had been silent the whole time. He was leaning against the far wall, moving his lips almost silently to the empty space beside him. Out of curiosity, I looked the same way, though I found nothing there. It's nothing. <laughs> huh? I looked back to see Damien look at me with his normal blank face. I couldn't help but stare back, feeling the red tint of embarrassment spreading across my face. As I stared, Damien gave a very small smile and closed his eyes, returning to his thoughts. Was he talking to a ghost? Or something? Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange, and with just guys. But they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like a part of their family as we ate. However, our peace was soon dis disturbed. Are they all brothers? Because they don't quite look... same. You Hello? Hey, honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night oh. to celebrate the new house and all. A house party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father insists. You know how he is with events. I know. Well, since I don't exactly have you two here to help me arrange it, I'm going to need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Suzu and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. Th that's, that seems to be the only excuse. You know how your father is. I know. I have to do it myself. He won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. So you guys want to throw the party, but I have to do all the preparations. And it's my house. What if I don't want to? <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Alright, I gotta go. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, Mom. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Great. Now how am I going to do this? Is something wrong? Yes, something terribly is going wrong. She has to organize a house party for her parents. How did you... Oh, right. Mind reading. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta do it soon or my parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. <laughs> Sam? Back off! We'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. 
I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Oh, I'm trying to burp. Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then I hit... Wait. Where are y'all going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Oh, got it. All right, then. I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. I will. You too. With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, he was. Shh! <laughs> as soon as I got into my room, a wave of exhaustion hit me. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I just woke up from that nap. I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and grabbed my economics book. Knowing that, no matter how tired I was, I had to study at least page two, a page or two before sleeping at last. The words on the page scrambled on my mind as I read them read through them. But after two or three tries, I managed to understand what the page was about. Yeah, that sounds like economics to me. <laughs> Equations. Ugh. Finally, I decided to change into my pajamas and head to bed. Today was a long day, and I needed rest. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Three, day three days of surprises in a row will kill me. With that thought in my mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing that darkness of slumber. <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! That legit scared me. I, like, I'm goofed out. Huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up, and I couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it! Let her go! Matthew? Come on, chicken shit! Oh, Fight us like a real man! <laughs> like you scare me, Sam! Come on! Take one step, I dare ya! Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix! Malix. And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Suddenly, I felt myself pulled to one side, and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. What the F is going on? That, that would be my reaction, not, not this. Uh, huh? Eric? As I, held in t <laughs> uh, as I was held in, t in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had faded into black. As arms around me rocked me comfortly. Is this legit or is it <laughs> is it a dream? Slowly, though my eyes fluttered open, I looked up at the person holding me. D Damien? What the F is going on? I'm confused. I stared into the eyes of Damien. His face was painted with worry and concern. And I knew he must have seen my dream. Ah, <sighs> the question I asked last episode. Why did I dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control your dreams. Oh. Oh. Well, I guess you're right. Are you okay? Hell, F no. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. What time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... You can't control your mind reading? No. Not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Oh, damn. It must be hard, then. A thousand voices in your brain. Is everything all right? No. Huh? Yeah, I'm alright. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yep. Yes, I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Oh, you guys are too sweet, but nightmare, not cool. Uh, oh, thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. Can you guys answer my question, though? Is, is the legit guy that um, is chasing you guys named Malik? 
because my brain would be so smart. It was embarrassing. <laughs> it was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just courtesy or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. Alright. Damien could. He just read what you said. I'm pretty sure. The two boys led me back to the dining room, where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl and heed. Breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. Oh, thank you. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. The feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Morning. You alright? Oh, you're, you're actually caring for me now, Sam. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. Or are you just sucking energy out of me? I just realized that. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! There's no need to yell, Sam! <laughs> You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his temples in an obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and sparked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. Then wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Soon, James and Damien appeared. Where's Matthew? James and Damien appeared. Hands full of plates that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They placed the plates down by each seat before they seated themselves. Mmm, my favorite. Finally. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. Where's Matthew? It's our pleasure. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring. I should read a prayer from my papa and answer. Hello? Hey! Good morning! Guess who's at your door right now? <laughs> oh my god. Right on cue, there was a knock from, my lo from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it! Oh my god, no. <laughs> my heart quickly began to pound on my chest. Matthew was in the lobby and he gets to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through an archway between the dining room and lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before my words could reach his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Uh, um... The world around me stopped as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh, <laughs> hi? <laughs> I could not believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sakes, someone do something other than stand there. Who are you? S Suzu, let me explain. What's going on here? Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh my God. Oh. Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. They're my brother. Visitors. Then why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Vis visitors can open the door? What the hell are you guys talking about? Um, it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and I felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. 
We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. Are you legit? <laughs> I've been using that word too much in this episode. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seems surreal. Please don't tell them, please. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Susu and Naomi and sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Susu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing. Thank you. Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wants to wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. Mm. So, Anderson... Are you gonna tell us what's going on? Well, you see... Uh... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Susu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. <laughs> we were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense! It's such a huge house! A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work, so she lets us wear casual clothes. <laughs> yeah, something like that. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. <laughs> You're some butler, Sam. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. Aw, oh, thank you, Suzu. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out. At the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Honestly, I'll pick the help around the house because if it's my dad and he told me to do this, I would do it. I would have to tell my friends, hold on. Are you sure? I'm sure. Besides, it is my housewarming party. I should help out too. Want us to help out as well? I think we got it all taken care of. Thanks, little girls. Alright, we'll head on out then so we're not in the way. Sorry, guys. I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I led them back into the lobby and walked them to the doors, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking out to Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my, they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work, the party was tonight, and we had to do all we could to make everything right. That that all rhymed. <laughs> we sat down and talked about what happened what needed to happen before the party started that night. Each guy had been assigned a different part of the party to do, 
and right after lunch we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one incubus, James told, told me I could assist one of us. The question was who? Oh shoot, I was gonna save it before <laughs> before I even chose. Well, I guess I have to pick it and then you guys will see it next episode. So I'm pretty sure whoever I pick is who whose route I will be going towards. I think I will be doing all of their routes because they all seem like to have a different personality. But um I was gonna pick Matthew honestly in the beginning, the very beginning, because he seemed like the happy bubbly type. But uh, I think I'm going for Damien. Sam, Eric, Matthew, Damien, and James. Right? Yeah, I'm going for Damien with the lobby, and we're saving here. Right there. So I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I'm probably going to record more like tomorrow. Yeah. You guys can see the progress right here, right? <laughs> like I'm I'm honestly just pre-recording a whole lot. I'm going to be so sad once the game ends. But it's technically not going to end because I'm going to be playing it four more other times. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm going to take my butt to sleep. Because it's almost 1 in the morning here. And it will sound weird when this is video is uploaded. Because it will be uploaded in like the afternoon. On a different date. But yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Stay beautiful. And yeah. Good morning. Good night. Good evening. Wherever you guys are. 